My first guest tonight has been reporting on Washington since 1995, and nobody's better at making sense of it. Please welcome John Dickerson. <laughs> First of all, how's 60 Minutes? It's great. It is great. They, the reputation they have, it turns out, for a reason. Yeah. 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 Really it's good. news that people still watch. Yeah. <laughs> and everything polished and polished and polished at every level. It's great. Well, we uh, have got uh, a big news to break to this audience, at least, because it broke while they were seated here. They don't know this. Let me just uh, read this here. This just broke. Michael Bloomberg is expected to file to get on the Democratic ballot in Alabama's presidential primary. Why now? By the way, you only heard one woo. <laughs> a, sing a single woo candidate. Uh, in New we, York. Yes, exactly, in New York, which we can talk about that in, in a moment. I think, so I've called two people about this. One person said he's running. Uh, and these are people who are close to Mike Bloomberg. The other person said he's putting on his running shoes. He's done polling. And, you know, he's done this before. He's thought about getting in or not. Yeah, he actually put organizations in all the states. In he was all ready the states. to go, right? He was ready to go. He was thinking about vice presidents. He was ready to go and decided that there were too many hoops in Democratic politics to jump through that he wasn't naturally associated with. He's not a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat, which is why you only got one woo. Um, <laughs> he's been a Democrat, he's been a Republican, and he's been an Independent. Right. Exactly. And, but what he has decided, they've looked at the polls, and the concern is that the party has gone too far to the left, but they decide, the thinking is there's only room for one moderate. And the moderate in the race right now, which is to say Joe Biden, isn't getting the job done, and so Mike Bloomberg thinks there's a place for him. So this is really... It's a, it's I had a heard that he wasn't going to run because right. Biden was getting traction. Right. So but this just cuts him off at the legs. If people believe that Bloomberg's right, then that's right, bad exactly. for Biden. And by the way, even if people don't agree with what uh, Bloomberg is doing, it raises this question. And in other words, Joe Biden is so weakened that another person had to come in to rescue the moderate message in the in the in the race. Which Isn't is not Mayor great Pete for... the guy ready to step in for Joe Biden? Because Mayor, Mayor Pete wants to occupy, and so does Klobuchar, want to occupy that moderate lane. When Mayor Pete is running on a kind of quasi-Bloomberg argument, which is to say, I've been an executive, I've, I've been in combat. So, in other words, I've faced a little bit of the testing that you face or you need to face, or some people believe you need to face, before you go into this big and important job. Now, Bloomberg would argue, well, but I've, you know, been a CEO and I've been a mayor. So that would be his argument. But yes, Mayor Pete is the, would be the, uh, the kind of understudy to Biden in the, in, the, um, in the moderate lane. If I can mix my acting sure, and my uh, go running Sure, go right ahead, sure. Yeah. Um, now, what about Warren? Because Warren is leading in some polls. Recent polls come out. She was leading in Iowa significantly. She's doing well in New Hampshire. What does this mean to Warren if Bloomberg jumps in, because a lot of billionaires are not happy about her, I wonder why. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I think in, it, it's a good sign for Warren in the sense that Bloomberg is concerned that the party is going in that direction, and he wouldn't be concerned if she weren't doing well. Uh, so she is, uh, you know, the, the party is having this big open debate, and Mike Bloomberg has decided he wants to get right in the middle of it. There are only, according to Fortune magazine, 607 billionaires in the world. Why do we care what they think? And because there's a lot more of us, and they've got too much money. Give your money to people who need it, and collective, collective distribution of your wealth is not anti-American. It's as American as Eisenhower. Uh, well, and by the way, of those number of billionaires, they probably aren't that many in the caucus states in, in Iowa and in New Hampshire, so they're really right. even less important. Why I is it a bad idea to attack billionaires, I suppose? I don't think in the Democratic Party it's a bad idea at all. I mean, that's why Elizabeth Warren is, is doing, doing well. pretty well, yeah. I think, I think she's... Because what, what her argument is, is, look, the, the capitalism has come to a problem, and it needs some management, as she would argue has always been the case with capitalism in America. It has not just been the unfettered market. And so it needs some intelligent management because we have these great disparities and, and there is this great inequality. That is her case, and so she uses them as the, uh, the kind of the boogeyman in, in making that case by saying, look at how the system has been tilted so much to that very, very small number of people. 
Now, um, we just heard in my monologue, if that's the first place you've heard it, that uh, Donald Trump is uh, talking with Mark Burnett about his job after the presidency. Uh, the Apprentice, the White House, is, is one possibility. So, if Trump does ever leave the White House, what is that job going to be like for the next person? Because you wrote uh, a cover article for The Atlantic. I know you were going to book about this, right. about the, the presidency. What's it, what do you call it? The hardest job? The hardest job in the world. The, right. uh, the argument of the book is essentially the job's different than the thing we talk about in campaigns. In campaigns, the candidates are talking about big, huge issues, a Medicare for all, um, these large, enormous issues. Let's imagine a Democrat gets elected, Donald Trump doesn't get reelected. Um, Hold on. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta let it breathe. Yeah. Okay. I have bad timing in that way. Um, uh, what the country, if that's the scenario, the country will have decided there needs to be a restoration of the norms and practices of the presidency. Mm -hmm. There also will have been a very ugly fight between now and that, that election because we've already seen it, it's gonna get uglier. So, and the country will have been through this three years of unpredictability and sort of being up on tiptoe. A Democrat will come in, the country may not be ready for a lot of big grand plans like a big change of the American healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna be a lot of restoration work to do. Most of it's gonna be overseas. A lot of it's going to be in secret, covert stuff that we don't even know about. So candidates make these plans, and then they come into the job, and it is wildly different than they, than they think. And I should finally add that after a scorched earth campaign, which looks like what we're going to have, how easy is Congress going to be to deal with? There are going to be a lot of Republicans in this scenario who are not going to be that anxious to maybe work with a Democratic president. So getting legislation through, even if you try and bank shot it through with the reconciliation process, will be very difficult. So expectations for a democratic whirlwind in the first 100 days should probably be lowered a bit. Well, we have to take a little bit of a break. Uh, please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Mr. John Dickerson from 60 Minutes.